Uh, welcome back. End of uh, night two for us. Uh, really excited to add the players that, that we added, uh, starting with uh, Roger. Um, obviously really high on him, good cover skills, uh, covered a lot of good guys in the SEC. Uh, Nick out of high State, played both sides, left and right. Long athletic, spent a lot of time with here on the visit, and then uh, wrapped it up with Malik there. You know, he was the best player on the board and excited to add him to the team. So with that, we'll open it up for questions. Why was, why was it important to move up a couple spots? I mean, how worried were you there that you had to do that? Well, you just never know what's going to go on behind you. You know, you're, he was the best player on our board. We were a couple picks out. You're looking at the teams that are ahead of you, um, but you're also looking and being cognizant of the, of the teams that are behind you and the potential for, you know, somebody to come up or a team in the fourth to come back in, you know, to the third there. So. Is potential, and, and what do you think about where he is right now? The quarterback, um, good arm, athletic, um, moves around well, um, got a really good skill set, um, throws a good ball, he's tough to tackle. Um, you know, he's got a lot of work to do, obviously, like you know, all these rookies do, but um, excited to, to add him to the team and let him compete. Mike, what's it say? Mentioned he's got a lot of work to do. Is there one or two areas in particular? That well, it's just, it's just, I mean, you're learning a new offense. You know, you're coming in, and all these guys, whatever position they play, they're learning new terminology, they're learning, you know, new things. Um, so I'm, you know, how quickly he gets acclimated to that, and we'll probably determine how quickly he progresses. What's it say about Ryan's future? Well, we're excited. You know, the, the Malik to the quarterback room, you know, with Kevin and Woody. And obviously, Ryan, you know, we're, we're, we're really just excited about being able to, to develop young players and see, you know, what happens. I don't think anybody's, you know, going to be able to, to talk about anybody's future tonight. I think we're just excited to, to be able to get these three players where we got them, um, guys that we've, you know, met about and talked about, so we're excited. Malik was a guy, obviously, that's being projected top 10 in some of these mock drafts. I mean, did you, did you ever think you would be able to get that guy in the um, you know, as it started to kind of go on, I, I had my, I had my doubts. I thought some teams might look at it like us and like, you know, here's a good football player who, you know, has got a lot of good traits and things to, to work with and, and develop. Um, and then as it, you know, got even closer and closer, it became a little bit more apparent. Like we got a shot, we got a shot here. But Mike, with Malik and his skill set, obviously you need to see him here, but uh, potential maybe to work him into a package or two? Well, I think that there's a lot of things that we can do, um, you know, with different skill players, Teresa. So, you know, when we look and we talk and, and you know, watching his tape, he's a tough tackle. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of things that we're going to have to work with and develop that our coaches are excited. And, you know, I know Malik's ready to get here and get to work. Um, but I think it's just too soon to talk about, you know, certain packages, and we've done that in the past. And, you know, we'll try to do um, and put the best players out there to give us a chance to win. What about Nicholas's kind of skill set, and he's kind of a unique personality as well. Yeah, um, extremely in intelligent. Um, you know, I like the fact that he's played a couple different spots, and he's played a couple different spots in game. You know, you can see him. You know, he's kicked over to the right side, kicked over to the left side in a game, and that's sometimes a tough transition for players. You know, to do that, uh, and I thought he did it. You know, he did it pretty well, um, like his length um, and, and like the way he, he competes. And obviously, played at a, a you know really good school. Really good. kudos. Really good. No. Um, and, and, and in a great conference, and, and for you know great coaching staff. Mike, does he make Dylan more likely now to be guard? No, I don't think we've had those conversations. I think that uh, you know Nick does have flexibility. He's got some versatility. He's played. You know, a lot of snaps um, in the Big Ten. I'm very familiar with the program that he's coming from. Um, you know, he just there's he's got a really good frame, great build. You know, but we'll figure out here where where guys start to go. We haven't even been out on the field yet. With Roger, what does he give you from a trade standpoint? He covers his guy. I know when you when you when you press play, he's close to his guy, and um, he's competitive, no nonsense. Um, came in. Sat down, talked. I mean, every tape that we watched, he was close to his guy. They all get beat, but uh, it was fun watching him in that Alabama game. And those guys are all, you know, got drafted, you know, high. So he was covering them pretty well. You mentioned, I think, the other day that <clears throat> if you're going to draft a guy at a position.
position. I think you said in reference to maybe even a quarterback, that you might talk to the guy to the guy that's here first. Did you have any kind of a conversation with Ryan but before taking the leap there? No, we I mean when we get to third round, like we got to you know, we just it was the best player on our board, like you know, like we said and um, felt the value was there to, to add a player uh, at that position. And, um, you know, really all of these guys were excited about the competition. Roger, um, you know, Nick, um, Traylon, all the, the competition that they're going to add and infuse into their position groups. Talking about him as a, as a third round pick, sounds like it's different than, than if he was a first or second round pick in terms of what you're forecasting for him. I mean, you envision him as this, the starter of the future, or is that less the predetermined case based on his draft slot? Well, I think his role will be determined by how quickly he comes in here and, and learns the offense and um, improves and and gets to you know g- gains the respect of his teammates. You know, no different than any other player. They're gonna they're gonna earn opportunities, but you know, again, he was a, he was a player that was just kind of staring at us there, and. Um, you know, we were excited that when we, we were able to get up and, and get him and and not get jumped if somebody was coming up. Three years in a row you've drafted a cornerback first or second round. Is that one of those positions that it, it's harder to find quality later in the draft? Maybe? It went pretty quick, uh, Dave, there after you know, after we took Roger, um, that was a position group that started to get, you know, picked pretty pretty quickly. Um, you know, you see the um, the receivers that are in, you know, in this league, you better have guys that can can kind of match and cover them. And you know, Roger was great. He was great on on the interview. Um, he likes cereal and bologna uh, sandwiches and and baked beans. So uh, he, he's a simple guy. He was like, I trying to cover my guy, coach, and don't let him catch it. And when they they throw it to him, I tackle him. So that that's like you got the job description down pretty good, Roger. How, how did that interview process go? Because there were some things said, like he didn't interview well. How, how did that go for, for you guys? Oh, I think, I mean, he, he came across good. He was well-spoken, um, was um, engaging, um, easy to talk to. I just got off the phone with him a while ago. I, he's um, deeply rooted in his faith. His family got together and, and prayed and, and thanked uh, the Lord for the opportunity to come here, which I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so uh, he was good with us. You talked last week in terms of quarterbacks a lot about leadership. How do you how do you go about evaluating that? What did you see from Malik in that regard? Yeah, I think it's the teammates and how they how they respond, um, you know, to, to that player. And um, I think you saw guys, you know, rally and, and, and playing hard when, when he had the ball in his hands and trying to block guys to free him up and um, excited, you know, when he would make a big throw. So, um, you know, he, he knows he's got to come in here and earn the respect of, of new teammates, and that was – and one at the top of uh, top of his to-do list um, when I spoke to him. At the cornerback spot, if, if assuming Farley is healthy, you got Farley, Fulton, McCreary, do they all get on the field in some ways together? Or is that you see the one of you guys? Is that we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. I mean, you can't have enough of them. I and mean, we, we, we saw that last year when we went through 91 different players. So you can never have enough um, good players that we think can go out there and, and compete and play at a, at a winning level. Like when you've got corners that have different skill sets and that have experience, does that give you more flexibility week in and week out determining matchups? Well, obviously, if you could play man coverage every single snap and, and not get you know, you know, picked and rubbed, you would. And so I think these, you know, the guys that we're starting to get now, we, we hope that we can continue to play some more man, mix in the zone. Um, they've all played inside except for you know me and Caleb, and you know, um, they're they're all really really improving. And I know that. You know, this is going to be a great opportunity for us to to add competition, like John said. But also, man, you got some matchups. You guys got different skill sets that you know, Caleb's a little longer, and Christian's maybe a little bit more seasoned, a little more versatile. You know, and then Roger, you know, really um, excelled at that role man coverage last year. He comes in and grows, <clears throat> matures the way you guys envision a year from now. What do you what do you imagine for him? Well, yeah, I don't know. I can't predict the future, but um, you know, I know right now we're excited to get to get him and, and these other guys um, that we drafted, the guys that we're going to you know pick up tomorrow and, and sign in the post draft and let them come in here for rookie camp and compete, and then transition them over into you know with the vets, um, get them to, to know their teammates, and you know I hope they all grow and, and improve and develop into you know contributors here for the team. For most you guys, mentioned you'd say, for most guys, you'd say you want them to compete for a starting role. 
would you expect him to compete for a starting role? By the, well, I think again, like I said, I think that's up to the, to the player and how how quickly they come in here and and, and learn the system, uh, gain the respect of their teammates, and um, they they'll determine you know how quickly they they move up and, and compete for for whatever role it may be. We want them all to compete for starting roles. I think that would be the idea. I think that everybody wants the corner office. Everybody wants to to live on the top floor, and so. Uh, you know, that's what you're trying to do in professional sports. Are four corner or four quarterbacks too many to get work for throughout the off season? Well, we've tried to do a lot of two spot stuff, and and we're going to you know have to evaluate that and and see if we can get everybody enough work. Um, but hopefully, in the off season and some of the stuff that we're doing, uh, we can two spot it and and make sure that we got two groups working at the same time. John, you mentioned Nick's swing tackle versatility. Can he also play inside, or, or do you maybe see more of interchangeable? Yeah, I think when you know when we get those guys in here, we, we move them around, and, and like I said, um, you know when I spoke the last time, it, it's about getting the right five, getting the, the combination of the best five guys up there, and uh, whatever whatever combination that is. I think he's probably a little more versed at, at, at tackle. Um, but it doesn't mean he can't play, you know, guard. Uh, Nate Davis was a tackle at Charlotte who moved into guard. So yeah, you just got to project ahead, John. I mean, what, what, what's the board look like now? Maybe what are some areas you feel like you still need to tackle? Going well, I don't know what's left. I think we, I don't know if the rounds ended up here. So we'll we'll see. Kind of we'll take stock in the morning and um, you know start to kind of see where we're at and um, uh, who's left and. You know, there's still some there's still some players that we certainly like at certain positions, and uh, we're trying to get ourselves in position to um, get as many of them as we can. I, I know you want everybody to be versatile. He's more than a little bit more versed at tackle, isn't he? Played only tackle in the last. He's played both both tackle spots. Both. Yeah. But no guard. No, but I'm saying like you can, you can work those guys at, at guard. Like that just because they're at tackle, like Nate was a tackle, we moved him to guard. So. Um, Again, I think he would probably work at tackle, and we'll see if he works at guard. Did that selection have any bearing on, on Dylan Reagan's mind? I know he worked at left guard, he's worked at tackle. Does that have any bearing on like, where you guys project him? No. I mean, I don't think we're going to go into projections. We're going to start next week with our, the guys that will be here um, with a lot of individual work because that's what the rules are, and I think it's great. I would, I would advocate for as much phase two work as – as we could possibly get, because that's where you know you improve. That's where you make strides. That's where you um, learn your craft and, and, and are able to play in a manner that hopefully is safe and, and keeps you healthy and helps the team win. So that's where we're going to start. And you know, if you're a guard or a tackle on the right side, you're going to be in a right-handed stance and you're going to be making the same movements. You're going to be coming off the ball. And if you're on the left side, so right now for the next three weeks, we're going to be working skills and we're not going to be working against each other, they're not going to be having to block anybody. So we'll go through that process and, you know, once we get closer to where we have to compete and, and block somebody, then we're going to try to find a lineup and then allow them to compete. When you talked to Malik, how emotional was that call? It's been a pretty rough 24 hours for him, the wait. Yeah, yeah it, uh, it, it started off kind of quiet and then um, once I think it kind of set in that he was, you know, a pro professional football player. Um, you, you could hear the elation in the background. He had a lot of family and friends there um, that were that were hooping and hollering pretty good. Just a, it's a cool moment for me to have those conversations with those guys. Um, you know, when they when they pick up on the other end of the line and say hello, and, and you deliver that news to them. You know, the, the aftermath of what hap happens is a really special moment. You have your rookie camp next weekend, the weekend following. The weekend following. Okay.